Regional banks hit hard again this week, putting themselves on pace for their worst month since March of 2020. The KRE ETF losing nearly 12 percent this month. And the chart master says there is not a lot of reason for hope in this sector. Let's bring in Carter Worth of Worth Charting for more. Carter, what are you looking at? It isn't great, and it isn't great at the large cap bank level, so-called uh, money center banks, if you will. Let's look at the charts and figure it out together. The first two charts are two panel charts. And what you see here, and this is sort of important, the top panel is the KRE moving higher. The bottom panel is relative performance, of course, to the entire financial sector as measured by the XLF. But that vertical orange line, that's the presidential election in 2016. Rates popped dramatically. We were trading it um, maybe, uh, what was it, sort of one, and we popped almost 100 basis points right after the election. I think we went from 1.3 to about 2.6, if you look at the summer low before the election to the Christmas of uh, that year. And yet, look at the relative performance. That was the peak. Regional banks got their lift, and they've been underperforming their sector ever since. Look at the next chart. We'll put some lines in their arrows just to annotate it even more. So you get that relative outperformance. You get an absolute pop. Even though regional banks keep going higher, they start faltering relative to other choices within the sector. So uh, take a look at a chart of uh, KRE itself. If that's not a topping out formation, then um, I don't know if they one exists. You have a break in trend. You have a well-defined formation. Doesn't matter whether you call it a head and shoulders. And then um, finally, if you want, let's look at a comparative chart, not relative, but this is the real story of financials. Those bottom two laggards there, you see what they are. That's the BKX, money center, big banks, and KRE. Leading the way, of course, is S&P. Uh, this has just not been a good area. What now would make it a good area if and as we're going into a period of uh, sort of economic contraction or at least slow growth. Carter, thank you. We'll see you shortly on Options Action. Carter Braxton Worth of Worth Charting. Um, Guy, how are you yes. feeling about the... Regions? He's right. I mean, if you look at like a hundred in banks, for example, HBAN, which I think they're all, they're 50 stocks, all 2%, but that's 2.3% of the KRE. It's not traded well. I mean, it's gone from 16 to 13 and a half in about a week. These stocks are telling you something. I think it's a sort of a tell on where the consumer is. And look at American Express just anecdotally. That stock has not traded well now the last couple of weeks. Credit is going to be a concern. And if credit's concerned, these banks are not going to trade well. Credit and crypto. There's crypto, crypto. exposure in Signature Bank, which is a component, one of the top components of uh, KRE. Yeah, so that's weighing down that index right there. But let's just look at the Bank of America. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago when uh, Moynihan, the CEO of Bank of America, was at that Goldman conference, and he seemed to change his tune a little bit, right? Remember he and uh, Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan had kind of differing views of the economic climate back mid-year or so, and that stock has dropped 17% in a straight line since he spoke at that conference. And again, I just go back to what Guy just said. When you look at some of these names that are very exposed to lending and just the consumer in general, their underperformance right now at this point in the year is really troubling. Not allocating new capital to, to regional banks uh, and, and not even money center banks. I just think we've seen this in the market cycles and the phases where uh, banks were, were certainly sold first, questions later in terms of credit exposure. I think we've realized that right now the credit concerns, at least for, for the market at this stage, are not where we think they are. I think as we get into next year and we really see the slowdown in growth that we're all anticipating in some of these downgrades and revisions, I think you're going to start having this conversation with banks again. I don't think you need to chase them. I think the money center banks are a very different place. I think the balance sheets and even across the regionals, like Citizens, Citizens Financial trades really cheap. It's got a 4.5% dividend yield. Not a reason to go out and buy it. Yeah. Bonwin? Yeah, Capital One Financial is probably the one I'd stay away from the most here. I just think that these banks don't have the same levers that some of the larger uh, asset managers or, or money sending banks have, right? You're not getting that same fee structure. Even if deals are kind of drying up, you're not getting that fee structure. Really what you're kind of subject to is the consumer lending uh, and, and credit environment. And, and as we've all said, we kind of see that kind of taking a bit of a nosedive going into 2023. So that's likely why you see the weakness there. They simply don't have the upside that the other money centers have.